But there is a challenge, and we've got to get big business, we've got to get corporations in our business to understand the power of this demographic. And finally, I think we've reached a tipping point. Uh, this was on Money Watch not long ago. Millennials, with all due respect to you millennials, are yesterday's news. Tomorrow belongs to the old. It's important for you guys. You're building a business, a critically important business, out of helping people who are getting old. Charles Dickens, in the first page of A Tale of Two Cities, says it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. It was a time when anything was possible, and it was a time when nothing was impossible. And that is what exactly is happening in aging in America. The baby boomer demographic is the most diverse, diverse cohort that has ever existed. Extreme wealth, extreme poverty, unbelievable physical fitness, and unbelievable poor health habits. So how is it, is it a tale of two cities? First of all, this is the greatest time in the history of humankind to be over 50 or 60 or 80 or 100. I believe this with every fiber of my being. Mankind has been on this planet for 300,000 years, and for 99.9% .9 of that time, the average life expectancy was 35. In this country in 1900, the average life expectancy was 49. From the beginning of time, every human being of all human beings who have lived to be age 65, two-thirds of them are alive today. And if you are a woman that is 65 today in America, you have a 25% chance of living to be 100. The opportunities of aging are limitless. And this is where the action is. This is the action that you guys are going to see in the, dec in the next decade. Cody mentioned we do stories on cool people doing cool stuff, and we do, and I can tell you what 90-year-olds are doing in this country today is mind-blowing. They are everywhere, uh, and the stuff that they're doing is inspirational and motivational to all of us. So if it's the best of times, how is it also the worst of times? Well, despite the fact that we are about to experience an explosion in longevity, and believe me, it is coming. The oldest living human being was Jean Clement. She lived to 122 years, 364 days. Died in 1997. Nobody's come close since. That is going to be demolished in the next 25 years. Despite that, li uh, the average life expectancy in America actually declined last year. There are a lot of older people that are frustrated, that are depressed, and the suicide rate for older people, which was primarily very stable from the 1950s, has skyrocketed in the last 15 years. The highest incidence of suicide are white men over the age of 85. The next highest are men and women, 45 to 65. So what's happening? There's at least three reasons. There's lots of reasons, but there's three that I understand better than others why people are so depressed when they're older. Number one is low social interaction. We are social creatures. Separate us from the herd. Isolate us, and we are going to die very, very quickly as we get older. There's been multiple studies lately that show that as we age, low socialization is more harmful to our health than smoking, alcoholism, or obesity. That's a mouthful. You can be a 20-year-old and sit in your dorm room and not talk to anybody, and it's not going to kill you. But if you're an 85-year-old and you sit in your room and don't talk to anybody, it will kill you, and it will kill you very, very quickly. Number two is lack of physical activity. 35% of U.S. adults 50 to 90 do not exercise at all. Only 13% over the age of 60 exercise enough, and it, we all know one study after another that Lack of exercise leads to chronic disease. Lack of exercise leads to mental illness. Lack of exercise leads to dementia. And finally, number three, we have all been brainwashed. And this is primarily what Growing Boulder has built a business upon. And the brainwashing is everywhere. We can't escape it. Sometimes talking about aging is a bad thing because we immediately start thinking about what we believe aging to be. The brainwashing started when we were kids. These are not the actual titles of these books. I made them up, but it does represent what's inside the books. <laughs> they did 11 different studies of children's literature 
in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, when I grew up. For those of you who are younger, it's gotten better, but it's still not good. In these books, 650 of them that they studied, older people didn't exist, or if they did, it was inconsequential to plot. They were there to mow the lawn in the background, or they were there to do what old people do best, and that, of course, is to get sick and die. And it's not just books. Television's been the worst offender, which, again, television roughly mirrors my life. Television from its inception to today has underrepresented and misrepresented older people, characterizing us almost without exception as fail, feeble, and forgetful. And of course, it's not just books and it's not just television, it's every part of our culture. We all laugh. We think it's funny when you get an over-the-hill birthday card, good God, you're 40. Who doesn't want on their 40th birthday card to have Depends and an AARP card or a coffin gift box when you turn 50? And it's not just that crap. It's mandatory retirement ages. It's doctors prescribing medication ahead of lifestyle modification. So here's the deal. From the moment you were born until this very moment, our culture has been whispering to you that age is a disease, and you got it. And now it's not only in your head, it's been embraced by your soul. And every time you get a gray hair, and every time you get a wrinkle, and every time you get an ache, and every time you get a pain, and every time you lose or forget something, you remind yourself that I am getting old, and I have a disease, and that's called aging. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why Growing Boulder exists. We are here to deprogram 